Well, this weekend is Memorial Day weekend, and Memorial Day weekend can be one of those, those holidays that we just don't exactly know what to do with. It ought to be a rather somber occasion when we reflect on and honor those men and women who have offered themselves as the ultimate sacrifice for the freedoms that we enjoy in our nation. And yet, for many of us, I would say maybe for most of us, we don't spend Memorial Day weekend visiting memorials. We don't spend the weekend reading books about these heroes who have given their lives for our freedoms. Or we don't spend our weekends in the afternoon on Sunday watching Saving Private Ryan or some other kind of movie like that in order to properly reflect on these sacrifices. Rather, for most of us, many of us, we spend the day having picnics, visiting the lake, perhaps sitting in front of the TV and watching race cars. That is how we spend this Memorial Day weekend. Very little to do with fallen soldiers and very much to do with rest and relaxation and having fun. So I wondered this week if we sometimes approach the doctrine of the Holy Trinity in a similar manner. That rather than, than giving God the honor and reverence and yes, even fear that he rightfully is worthy of, we often treat God's holiness perhaps with flippancy and even disrespect. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, we say. Three holies indicating the holiness of each person of the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Holy, holy, holy. Holy seems to be one of those churchy words that we really don't use outside of the church. We know what holiness describes. We know that it describes God. But when we say the word or we sing the word holy, 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 do we really know what all that means? The holiness of God means that he is perfect, that he is living. That his, his knowledge surpasses all human knowledge. The holiness of God is not just an adjective to describe him, but it is him. God is holy. The triune God is holy, holy, holy. Our three readings today give us some insight into the holiness of God and what that means to us and what our response to God's holiness ought to be. In our reading from the prophet Isaiah, Isaiah receives his call into the prophetic ministry. He is encountered by the presence of an almighty God. Even the angels cover their faces in his presence, humbling themselves before his holiness. Holy, 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 they sing to God. Almighty, as Isaiah witnesses this great spectacle, God filling his temple with his eternal presence, his holy presence, Isaiah cowers in fear. Isaiah says, woe is me. And woe is me is absolutely right. If we were to witness God in all of his glory, coming into our church the way Isaiah witnessed him coming into his temple, what would our reaction be? What should our reaction be? Because God is indeed with us today. He is present among us by his word and sacrament. But if God were to literally walk through those doors and fill this sanctuary with his presence, what would we do? We might, in our minds, have a picture of what that might look like. We might think that it would be like seeing a good friend and inviting him to come sit with us. Perhaps after church, come, have lunch with us, maybe have a beer. 
talk a little bit, enjoy some company. Or perhaps we would see God as a celebrity encounter, somebody that we are just so starstruck with and we want to get our picture taken with him or perhaps an autograph. But dear friends, God's holiness demands so much more than that. God's holiness demands reverence, and yes, even fear. If God were to walk into our sanctuary in that way today, our response should be, woe is me. Because a sinner in the presence of a holy and righteous God should bow before him in fear. As we said in our confession of sins, if you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Not one of us could stand in the presence of our holy God. Not one of us could face him and say, hey, buddy, good to have you here. Each and every one of us should bow before him and say, Woe is me, for I am a man of unclean lips among a people of unclean lips. There is something striking about being encountered with the holiness of God and crying out, Woe is me. There is something really striking about being encountered with the holiness that God encompasses about a crowd being preached to by the words of Peter and being cut to the heart by his preaching. And they say, what shall we do to be saved? Well, the holiness of God demands such a response. The holiness of God demands that we bow before him in reverence and fear and beg forgiveness in his presence. The triune God is not our drinking buddy. He's not somebody we can hang out with and joke with and tell stories with. He's not somebody that should be taken lightly and flippantly. He is the Almighty God. He is the Holy God. And you, you are not. And so it is fitting that we show a little respect, reverence, and fear as we stand in his presence, and as he stands in ours. But dear friends, your brothers and sisters in Christ, God will not leave us in such a state. He will not leave us in fear. He will not leave us cut to the heart or saying, woe is me. For Isaiah, as Isaiah confesses his sin before God, God places a burning coal on Isaiah's sinful, unclean lips. And by this burning coal, Isaiah's lips are purged. His guilt is taken away. His sin is atoned for. Now we might read this and think, oh my goodness, isn't there an easier way? Isn't there a, a, a better way maybe to cleanse the lips, perhaps soap and water would do? Do we really need the violence and the pain of the burning coal? And then we look at the cross of Jesus Christ and we perhaps ask the same questions. Isn't there another way? Do we really need the violence and the pain of the crucifixion in order for our sins to be taken away? And the answer is simply no. There is not another way. This was the way that our freedom from sin, death, and the power of the devil had to be accomplished. This loving way, this way of sacrifice, greater love has no one than this, that a man would lay down his life for his friends. Yes, it is by Christ's pain, by his sacrifice, by this violence that is done to him, that your sins are atoned for, your guilt is taken away. 
And so the burning coal that touches Isaiah's lips shows us that God always works through means. Today, the holiness of God's word touches your ears as it touches them. Then you hear this message. Your guilt is taken away. Your sin is atoned for. In just a little while, as we distribute the Lord's body and blood, and as this wafer and this sip of wine touches your lips, hear that message. Your guilt is taken away. Your sins are atoned for. Yes, you stand today in this sanctuary, in the presence of a holy and righteous God. And your unholiness is not held against you, but rather it is paid for by the sacrifice of Christ. And so, Memorial Day focuses on the sacrifices of men and women, and Holy Trinity Sunday focuses on, like every Sunday, the sacrifice of Christ. And while we approach both of these events with proper reverence, and fear, we also should remain confident in our freedom. We should be at peace in our conscience. And yes, we are even free to enjoy a picnic, to enjoy some rest and relaxation because of the freedom that has been accomplished and established for us. And so we sing, Holy, Holy, Holy is the Lord God Almighty. And as we sing this, may his holiness cause you to bow before him, but then rest at peace. For the Lord God Almighty has accomplished your salvation. Yes, your brothers in Christ, as Jesus has freed us by his sacrificial death, as his burning coal has touched your lips, he has prepared your lips for his service. He has prepared those lips to proclaim his message, his gospel of salvation to others. And so the Lord says, Who shall go for us? Whom shall I send? And we, bowing in holiness, bowing before the holiness of God, can say, in true freedom, here am I, send me, for my lips have been cleansed by your word and your sacrament. You have given me the freedom that I have enjoyed, and then we proclaim that freedom to others. In the name of Jesus, amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds. In Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.